Wow, what an amazing time of praise and worship. I almost didn't want it to come to an end. <laughs> um, I hope, thank you, worship team, for just leading us in that. Amazing songs this morning about how good God is. And I hope that each and every one of you knows how good God is to each of us. Well, as you can see, I'm still here. <laughs> and uh, it's my privilege this morning to uh, share the Word of God and continue in our series that we've been looking at um, on Nehemiah called Grand Designs. You know, the book of Nehemiah is such a great example of leadership and obedience, and there's so much that we can learn from this book. And last week, uh, if you were listening or if you were here, you would have heard about how we find Nehemiah. He was disturbed, desperate, and despondent. And what that caused him or what that led him to was to lead him to his knees, knees in prayer. And if you've been listening to anything that has been said from this platform over the last few months, I hope you've heard the message loud and clear that prayer should be the foundation of all that we do. We've learned how to pray dangerous prayers We've learned through all of the One Another series that prayer was important. If we're going to encourage, we need to pray. If we're going to forgive, we need to pray. If we're going to love one another, we need to pray. I was really challenged last week by what Pastor Jonathan said, and it got me to thinking, how desperate do we need to be before we start to pray like Nehemiah? Day and night he interceded before God for his people and for himself. Jonathan talked about being broken and needing to get to the end of ourselves before we get to that point. Have we not been there? I think as a church we have been there. We've been to the end of ourselves that caused us to pray. Maybe for some of you, you're not there yet or you are there or you've maybe lost your way a little bit because God hasn't responded in the past in the way that you expected him to or wanted him to. Or perhaps you've turned a blind eye to what's out there because it feels so daunting. I'm sure Nehemiah could have easily have just said, well, that's a story, I'm not there. He could have easily just turned a blind eye feeling that, well, what can I do? I'm just a man. Our primary reason is for the lost, the last, and the least. And it's time for us to open our ears and our eyes. I challenged you last time we spoke about getting out and serving. And to serve, we need to know the needs. How have you got on with that? Because if you have been doing that, if you've been getting out and getting to know your community, your neighbours, your friends even, you might start to be feeling a little bit despondent, discouraged and despaired right now because there are so many needs in our community. And just like Nehemiah, I hope that's causing you to pray. We learned in chapter one that Nehemiah knew the needs. He'd heard the stories and he'd been given his vision and he was burdened. And we're going to pick up the story now in chapter two, verses one to 11. So if you have your Bible, or I believe it will go on the screen as well, we can read this together. So Nehemiah chapter two, starting at verse one. Early the following spring in the month of Nisan, during the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never before appeared sad in his presence. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. Then I was terrified, but I replied, long live the king. How can I not be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. The king asked, well, how can I help you? With a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied, if it pleases the king, and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. The king with the queen sitting beside him asked, how long will you be gone? When will you return? After I told him how long I would be gone, the king agreed to my request. I also said to the king, if it pleases the king, let me have letters addressed to the governors and the province west of the Euphrates River, 
instructing them to let me travel safely through their territories on my way to Judah. And please give me a letter to Asaph, the manager of the king's forest, instructing him to give me timber. I will need to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress, for the city walls, and for a house for myself. And the king granted these requests because the gracious hand of God was on me. When I came to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, I delivered the king's letter to them. The king, I should add, had sent along army officers and horsemen to protect me. But when Sanballat and Horonite and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, heard of my arrival, they were very displeased that someone had come to help the people of Israel. So I arrived in Jerusalem. It will come to you as no surprise if any of you have heard me speak over the last few months that I do like to have a bit of wordplay. And so to help us focus on the message I believe God has for us this morning, I do have three key words that I want us to focus on. They are vision, provision, and mission. So if you remember those three words, when you go home, we're doing well. Vision, provision, and mission. You see, I'm gonna start with vision. This passage is thought uh, was around four months later than chapter one because it's now the month of Nisan, the festival. So that's how they place that. And this was quite significant for me as I was studying this because it meant that Nehemiah had been praying and fasting for four months. You know, a lot of times we get frustrated when nothing happens after five minutes. We pray and we don't get the answer. I've been feeling that way for the last 12 months. I've been praying that God would send me back to the Philippines and the answer just didn't come. But here's what I found very interesting about Nehemiah. Despite praying, he was also preparing because Nehemiah was preparing for the vision that God had given to him. And we'll find that out. You see, Nehemiah had vision. The news that he'd received in chapter one had led him to reposition. And that's what we heard from Jonathan last week. It repositioned him into a position of prayer. He felt burdened and he prayed. But not only that, Nehemiah did not spend those four months solely in despair. He was also purposeful with his prayer and his vision. He knew that the burden was birthing a vision or purpose in his life that God was calling him to. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, without a vision, the people perish. God may not speak to you through a dream. He may not speak audibly, but he has wired you up perfectly in a way that will accomplish his will and purpose in your life. It happens differently for everyone. For me, it was a quiet voice on a plane. It wasn't a loud, audible. It wasn't something that I can tangibly put my hand on. But what I can say to you is it spoke deep to my heart and it called a purpose and a vision into my life. Nehemiah, it was through the stories from from what he was hearing from home that birthed something in him that was from God that called him into his purpose and vision. Nehemiah was deeply challenged by the reports that he did heard at home. You might be stirred by some of the images that you're seeing around you. Some of you are maybe not affected at all by what you see on the news or in your streets. But what I'm trying to say to you is that God has many different ways to speak to us and it might be different for you than it was for me or for Nehemiah. But one thing remains certain and that, was, that is that God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. The thing is, if you become determined to know his plan, he will reveal it to you. If you are seeking for it. And I read this quote and it was very interesting. It said, as long as you can live without knowing his will for your life, you will. I'm going to say that again. As long as you can live without knowing the will Knowing his will for your life, you will, basically means if if you're not fulfilled in what you're doing and you're not looking for it, then it's not going to be revealed to you. We have to be seeking after God and his will for our lives. 
Even if things seem to be going well, don't wait any longer. Don't settle for knowing anything less than God's will and purpose for your life. The Bible makes it very clear, Ephesians 5 verse 17. Therefore, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. We are all commanded to know what it is that God has called us to do. Let's not be foolish in this day, these days, church. We need to understand what the Lord's will is for our lives, for our town and for our community. I cannot tell you what that is for you, but I repeat, as long as you continue living without knowing, then you will. And how will you know? I said this to you before, get out of the doors. Get out into the, the, the people. Listen like Nehemiah. He listened to the stories and he was concerned for, the, for his people, his home, even though he was in exile. There isn't a day that goes by that I'm not in contact with the Philippines, that I'm not asking how things are. I know my calling and I know my vision. I know where I'm supposed to be. I'm not saying rugby is exile, by the way. <laughs> it just felt a little bit like that. <laughs> um, but I have felt exiled from the Philippines for the last 18 months. But it doesn't mean I'm not concerned, nor does it mean that I haven't been productive. I've been working from here, preparing, planning, strategizing all the ways to make the academy productive and to continue to meet the needs of our community, which are to deliver education and the gospel to those who need to hear it. It has been a great time of productivity, albeit frustrating. And you see, it's the same with Nehemiah. During those months, he was productive. His prayers were drawing him closer to the vision and to God's heart. He was lining himself up to the plans and purposes of God. Prayer will do that in your life. It sets our hearts right. Jonathan spoke about that last week. So that when the time came, Nehemiah was ready. He was prepared to grab that opportunity that came his way, which leads to my second point provision. One thing being a missionary has taught me is that God, when God has given a vision, he has already thought through the provision. Whilst I've known this principle, I've never seen it more evident than during the past few years. Sometimes you see we get so caught up with the logistics and the practicalities that we lose sight of other vision as we try and do things in our own strength instead of praying and trusting in God. In fact, one thing I've learned the most is that I don't need to go around asking. I simply need to go around with God's vision. Don't you know that our God owns the cattle on a thousand hills? He is more than able to provide exactly what we need. We just need to be ready when asked. We read at the beginning of chapter two that Nehemiah was sad before the king. Carrying a burden will do that to you. I used to worry sometimes when I was affected emotionally by the burdens and things that I felt. I used to think I'm not a good Christian because I'm not showing the joy of the Lord or I'm not happy or I'm allowing the burdens to uh, worry me and it showed on my face until I realized that it's actually okay. In fact, Jesus was named the man of sorrows. Because you see, when you find yourself in that position, you can't help but feel emotional about it. You can't help but to show that. And that's exactly what Nehemiah was doing on his face. But he had an option, didn't he? When we're burdened, when we feel overwhelmed by what we see around us and it starts to affect us in our face, in our, in our character, in our attitude, we have a choice. We either act or we give in. You see, to act will see you go to prayer. It will see you, it will see you not give in. And all the things you find overwhelming and helpless, you will see that God has already provided for. That he cares for the sparrow, how much more important are you? And the vision he's asked you to bear. So take heart and be brave. Nehemiah had to be brave 
After four months of praying and fasting, the toll was now beginning to show on his face. This might not sound like much, but to display a negative emotion before the king was actually a capital offense. He could lose his life. So no wonder, Nehemiah, he says, I was terrified. I'm not surprised he was terrified. He was risking his life just by his facial expression, but he could bear it no more. And uh, even more so by his response, because he tells the king that he's sad because of the state of his city. And it was that king who had actually commanded it to be destroyed. But here's what's so amazing about how God works. Because Nehemiah did not even have to ask. He just shared from his heart. Now that took courage. Because here's what it says, and I like this in the, the, uh, in the New Living Translation. This is why I've picked this particular translation. Because here's what it says, the king asked. The king asked Nehemiah, well, how can I help you? When we started the primary school, the primary department at CGA, City Gates, we had no source of funds. We, our intention was to be self-sufficient. We simply shared our heart and our vision with the people that were around us when they would ask us what our plans were for the academy. At no point did we ask for additional funds. And this is what I'm saying, because when your vision lines up with God's vision, you don't even have to ask. Because we were then contacted literally before the school, months before the school started, what is your plan? How can we help? And this Christian charity in the Philippines who heard what we wanted to do and heard our vision asked us, how can we help? And they provided all our salaries for our teaching staff. And to this day, we're four years on now, or five years on, and they are still providing the salaries for our staff. I did not have to go to them and ask. They came to us and said, how can we help? You see, when God gives the vision, he also gives provision. It will not be hard to find people who recognize what God is doing in your life and ask, how can I help? The key is making sure in prayer that your vision is lining up with God's vision. I can, say, uh, I can say the same for my recent situation, and this is probably the best time to announce to you that the answer has changed. <laughs> for the past 12 months, whenever, as you know, I've been asked, when are you going back? I don't know. Well, today I'm going to tell you that this is my last Sunday here. Um, physically, I'm going to semi-shield for two weeks because on the 16th of October, I'm going back to the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time coming. <laughs> um, and, you know, but getting back to my point, it has been a stressful few weeks in our house as we have tried to, as the visa came in, I've got limited days literally to get back into the country before I have to apply for another visa. It's, it's a short window that we've got. And the costs were mounting and we looked at the, the flights and we looked at the insurance because the Philippines is on a red list and the cost just seemed to be insurmountable. And we went to bed, I went to bed one night and uh, we were waiting on a decision. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna sleep on it. And I just prayed before I went to bed. I said, Lord, I don't know how this is possible, but I pray that by the morning you will you will provide for me. And I literally was as, as clear as that, you'll provide for me. And here's the thing, I didn't ask anybody. But when I woke up that next morning, a friend contacted me and said, I want to cover your hotel because I've got to spend 10 days in the Philippines. From that, I had another amount put into my bank account. I've had things coming in over that week that just showed that I didn't have to ask all I had to do was align myself with the vision that God has given me and he will provide. You see, when God gives the vision, he gives the provision. We need to be ready. The important verse for me in the context of provision is there in verse four and five. When the king said to me, how can I help? And this is what Nehemiah said. Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I answered the king. What did Nehemiah do? What did I do? 
we prayed. Right in that moment, our prayers don't need to be elaborate. I'm sure Nehemiah didn't have much time to pray, Lord, and talk through all the things that he needed. But in that moment, he prayed. In that moment, that night last week, I prayed. And with the Holy Spirit inside you, you know you have the boldness to come before God and ask. You know, we've been cleansed and washed in the blood of Christ and we are children of God. So when we, can, when we present our requests before the King of Kings, how much more to earthly kings? And this is where we learn that Nehemiah had the boldness and the confidence. He went for broke. Yeah. He said, when he was asked, how can I help? He let it all go. Why? Because those four months, he knew his vision and he prepared for the mission. So that when he was asked, how can I help? He knew exactly what he needed. I want permits, I want wood, I want this, I want the other. Church, we are in a period, if you, are, if you know your vision but it's not coming true yet, keep praying, keep preparing because somebody might come alongside you and is going to say, how can I help? We need to be ready with the answer. You know, in missions I find sometimes when I present an idea that is very general, response is very low. If I am vague in what my vision is, support is low. But when I'm clear, focused and specific, people can grasp and see the vision and it doesn't matter how crazy it sounds or how expensive, people want to get involved because it's God's vision. You know the example I shared with you last week, we raised 8,000 pounds in a week for our tablet project. That seemed crazy, that seemed insurmountable, but we did it, why? All I had to do was be specific with the vision that God had given. Another was our school building. We needed four million pesos to build our elementary. But we, whilst, we, whilst we prayed, we planned. We made the sketches, we did the spreadsheets, we wrote the budgets. So guess what happened? Someone comes along, we didn't ask. They said, how can I help? And if my answer was, well, I need money to educate children in the Philippines, too vague. I'm pretty sure we'd still be waiting for it now. Friends, we need to be prepared. We need to be clear on the vision and mission so we can boldly, confidently approach and answer the question. Have you got a vision? And if so, if you know what God is asking you to do, then next, my next question is, have you got a plan for the mission? If not, you're not going to be ready when God sends the opportunity for you to answer, how can I help? So mission, on to my last point, you might be relieved to hear. So armed with his vision and provision, Nehemiah sets out on God's mission. You see, the whole crux of the gospel, of the Bible, is mission to expand the kingdom of God. And his mission is that all should, be repent, all should repent and be saved. Jesus told his disciples, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is in Acts 1.8. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That very same Holy Spirit is in you and me. That very same call is upon us. It may look different to, differently. Some are called to be witnesses in their homes, in their families, some to their colleagues, in their workplaces, on the school playground, or others called to other nations in the world. Regardless, the fact is, that we all have been given vision, provision to complete our mission, God's mission. It's not always easy though. And one thing we can be sure of is that you will face opposition. Actually, there's another one, opposition, that fits with my words. <laughs> we read here in verse 10 of uh, Nehemiah chapter two, when Sanballat and Horonite and Tobiah, the Ammonite official heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. We have an enemy that will seek to destroy and devour, to discourage and pull down, but do not fear. For we know who has the victory. It's been already done on the cross. 
So take heart. The road might not be easy, but we know the end of the story. And we even know what happens in Nehemiah. I'm not going to spoil it too much, although you should already know. (laughs) But be bold, courageous, and strong. Going in the vision and provision that God has given you together with the Holy Spirit in prayer. And what do we see that Nehemiah does next? He arrives. I arrived in Jerusalem. It's happening like that for me. A little over a month ago, I preached here and told you there was no news. And today, I'm telling you I'm going back in two weeks. God has prepared the way. He sent provision to fulfill the vision of his mission. You know, that song was great today, Ruth. I'd not really heard that before. But you know, I'm gonna see the goodness of God wherever I am, and where that is, is Antipolo (laughs) in two weeks' time, but you are going to see the goodness of God right here in rugby, but only if you seek after it. Remember, without the vision, we'll perish. So church, I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray as I make this transition for my family, for me. It's a lot different this time than it has ever been before. I'm going to a red-listed country. I can't come home easily. It's not as simple to travel anymore. Even finding insurance has been a nightmare. But I know that God is going to provide because the mission is there. But I'm going to be praying for you as you pray for me. Because the thing we can learn from the, Na- the thing we need to learn from Nehemiah is we need to reposition our lives as we heard from last week. We need to determine the vision that God has for your life and rely on Him for the provision and resource. And then we need to step out in f- with faith and boldness. You know, I want, when I come home, actually, even whilst I'm away, I want to hear stories from Rugby Elim of people rising up like Nehemiah with visions and plans that are specific to capture and encourage others to join with you. Without spoiling the story, Nehemiah doesn't complete his mission alone. In fact, he goes on to inspire others to join in the vision. God is preparing people right now to come alongside you in the mission that God is calling you to. He's he's preparing their hearts and their minds to catch it and be part of it. Who are you inspiring? Where is your vision casting? You know, I want us to be ready. I want us to be a church that can answer this and I'm going to finish. That when someone asks you, How can I help? Rugby Elim, are you ready to answer? I hope so. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake. Till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God.
spirit, the sun. We lift our praises, we bring you our songs.